Sex Pot Comedy, collaborative, community-driven comedy from Denver, Colorado. Now and then, here and there, and always at sexpotcomedy.com. So we're, we're lucky. We're, we're lucky in Denver. We have a great, uh, a great stable of comics. And you know, traditionally, and you know, my generation of comic that came up 30 years ago, and you know, some of them are still doing it. You know, mm-hmm. Lewis Johnson and you know Troy Baxley and and. Uh, you know, and and I I think that there's there's so many new young comics all the time, you know, and and so new, so many new rooms. I was getting nervous about being old. That people walk out and they think, Jesus, who's this guy? He can't be funny. Look how old he is. You know, yeah. what are you doing here, Gandalf? <laughs> <laughs> and so 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 I started doing. Uh, Nathan, Nathan Lund was nice enough to have me at at uh, uh, for two years in a row every Wednesday night at, at Too Much Fun, mm. and so trying new jokes and seeing that in front of a what was happening to me was I'd go second show Friday night downtown uh-huh. and the average age would be 24 and I'd walk out and I could hear their sphincters close you know <laughs> because, because it, I did the same thing you know yeah. when, when I was young and go into comedy and you see these old guys and you go Jesus you know what's this guy you know you know, <laughs> grandpa's bag broke you know, what he, what's he doing <laughs> and, and, and so <laughs> So I, I started doing those uh, the young hipster thing, it, it, too much fun, and realized that what's funny is funny. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny, it, it doesn't matter. You know, doesn't it, c- matter. it cuts across the age. Yeah. And, and so then, because I, I, I was getting a little bit of stage fright, because I, I was getting, oh, you know, they're not going to like me, they're not going to like me. And that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. You know, it, it's like, whatever you're going to do, if you envision yourself failing, you're going to fail. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm gonna drop this bleeder in surgery. I'm, I'm gonna drop this bleeder. I can't get that. No, no, man, I got this bleeder. You know, it's in boxing. Oh man, I got this. You know, yeah. or, you know, in comedy, it's it's all the same. It's all, it's all about repetition, and practice, and and confidence. Hell yeah, man, you should have done the beginning of this <laughs> with the <your laughs> advice. Well, it's all about stage time. Yeah, it's all about time doing it. You know, you see somebody has done something. I, I see people say, oh, he's an overnight sensation. Bullshit. No. You see somebody that's an overnight sensation, he's been doing it 15 years. Yep. He's been doing, he's been practicing. He's been doing, and there, I mean, there's some people, you know, I'd say 1% or 2% that, that really are overnight <laughs> sensation. But you see somebody that's coming up and, and he's doing well. He's done, his, he's done his road work. He's done his comedy sit-ups. He's been in, you know, the, the, the hell holes, you know, where we're, you know, <laughs> in a restaurant where, you know, the, the waitress is going in front of you or behind you all the time yeah. <laughs> telling you jokes. Or, you know, you're in some place where the, the, the woman in the front row goes, do you have any more ketchup? You know, yeah. like, I'm not your waiter. I'm telling you jokes. <laughs> <laughs> but those are the places you have to do. Yeah. You know, if you want to do comedy, this is so much like anything else. If you want to be a good drummer, you got to drum a little every day. This isn't something you can pick up once a month or do once every two weeks. You know, you, ha- you have to do it. You have to do it. And, and so, uh, and, and, and be, you know, tape yourself. You know, watch yourself, you know, uh, and, and listen to it. And be, be critical, you know. And, and, and uh, we don't learn from our success, sadly, in life. We learn from our failures. Mm-hmm. We, and so when I worked for the Rolling Stones, the advice that he would give the young bands, he'd go, don't read your good press the good clippings read the ones that didn't like you and how come they didn't like you and think on and promise you know uh, promise yourself that you're going to be thick skinned and and you're not going to just you know it's easy for me to always you know be told oh man Kev you did the one so what how do you do it day after day you're a genius mm. you know but we're not you know no. you have to earn it with the crowd you have to earn it with them you know and you have to take that stage mm-hmm. when i work for the p funk George would always get the band together right before, and he goes, we're going to go out there, and we're going to take the stage. You know, it, it's like D-Day. You know, yeah. you hit that stage ready. Yeah. You know, nobody came to, you know, and Jagger would tell the young young uh, musicians, nobody paid to see somebody be shy. You're going to take the stage, you're going to be entertaining, and you're going to be that person. Yeah. You're going to be, you're going to be that blown up Anthony or whatever it is, you know. And and nobody paid to see somebody go out there shy and put it up tentative and go, oh, here's one I hope you might like, you know, <laughs> no, no, here's the joke, it's like feeding baby birds. Mm. 
Shove it down. <laughs> Here's another one. You know, <laughs> it, it, sometimes when I see people, I think, you know, m my advice to young comics would be, y y you've seen them a couple of times and you know they got some good jokes, mm -hmm. and and rather than start with tried and true stuff, they start with a new joke that they don't maybe have their lips around yet mm -hmm. and the audience knows it's new and it doesn't get any result and then they're flustered mm -hmm. you know sandwich new jokes between the pillars of of good stuff you yeah. know it's going to work you know and, and then that way you know and, and every set every set one new joke every set one new joke no matter what you're doing you know and then that way over the course of a year 150 200 nights you're working got 200 new jokes yeah you know that's cool. And, and and keep track, keep track of what works and what doesn't, you know, and 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 trying trying to you know trying to keep track and go. A lot of times, if a joke works one time, and the next time it doesn't, you told it just the same. You stepped on it somehow. Mm -hmm. You stepped on it somehow. You you did something. You know, your body English wasn't right, or you you did it in a different rhythm, or you had the emphasis on the wrong word. Mm -hmm. You know, so what we are is wordsmiths. You know, we're trying to pick the funny words. We're trying to pick the words in the in the setup mm -hmm. that are funny, that makes them engage. One of the mistakes I see is that people have a funny punchline, but there's 26 sentences of buildup. Yeah. So the people, <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> the best is to at least have funny words or something that's humorous in in the the setup, and then so then the punch <laughs> is good because otherwise you've lost them. You yeah. Know? People don't know why they lose audiences. They they lose it. Because you know you let them lose it, you can't lose it. Grab them by the throat and shake them like a dog. <laughs> that's that's what, you know that's what your job is. Yeah. You know, I, you know I'm I'm here to make you laugh, and this is funny. I think it's funny. You know, boom. And if somebody's not laughing, you know you worry so much about the one person. Play to the room. Yeah. You know, play to the room, so and don't play to the people. comics. Don't play to the comics. Play to the audience. You know, too much time I, I see our, our friends try and make our other friends laugh. Mm -hmm. They're trying to make the comics laugh. They're playing to the comics in the room. Playing to the back of the house. They didn't pay anything to come in there. Pay to the people that paid. Yeah. You know, pay, pay, you know, work for the pe the people, you know. You know, yeah, she's an old lady, but she paid to go in there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, she did. She, then with God bless her. You know, with the young crowds, the young comics that come out and the crowd is small and, they, and they're, they're pissed. You can't be pissed at the people that showed up. They showed up. They showed up. <laughs> At least they're there. Yeah, you got to see this place when it's open. <laughs> yeah. This has been a sex pot comedy joint. Collaborative, community driven comedy produced by Andy Jewett and Kayvon Kalitvari. Headquartered in Denver, Colorado, with technical support from Isaac Miller. Every day at sexpotcomedy.com or at a show near you. Until next time, be well, friends.